All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and I just spent two nights in a row with Manuel Luzada, the winemaker for Numantia. And uh, wow, what a fabulous time and uh, some incredible wines. Really eye opening experience to be able to break bread with this great winemaker two nights in a row. We got a double shot of Numantia. Termes and Termanthia. And hey, Krug, how bad could your evening be if you know you're going to start off with one of the greatest champagne houses? And what the hell does Krug have to do with Numanthia anyways? Well, Numanthia was purchased in 2006 by LVMH. This is a luxury goods conglomeration that owns uh, well, wineries like Krug. And uh, they had Manuel down in uh, one of their properties down in Argentina at that time. Actually, he was winemaker for Rose's Port House before he left for Argentina. He's Portuguese, and uh, so he's made fortified wines. He went down to make the sparkling wines for Chandon down there, so he's made sparkling wines. He worked at Terrazas des Andes on the Cheval des Andes project. So this is a very well-versed winemaker. You don't find too many guys in the wine industry that has made fortified wine, sparkling wine, and still wine at a very high level. So like I said, just a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of information and, uh, you know, two great nights, two great evenings of food as well. The St. Regis, I think, outdid Zuma a little bit, you know, but, I mean, this was a smaller dinner, and uh, Andrew Ballack, the chef there, came out and introduced all the courses himself. I love that personal touch when you get a chef that likes to come out and interact with the diners. A fantastic evening. We started out with Krug, of course, and this is a wine that 200, 250 different wines go into making this wine, and with great vineyard sites like Clos de Menil going into the blend, a very complex bouquet, hazelnuts, marzipan, exotic spices, ginger, candy, dried fruits. Uh, the true art of blending really is what is ex exemplified here in Krug, and they have wines up to 20 years old that go into this. My favorite champagne house, and money is no object. I'm drinking Clos de Menil or Ambonet or something exotic like that, but you know, their multi vintage Grand Cuvée is as good as anything they make at Krug. All right, well, enough about Krug. We're here to talk about Numantia. And uh, well, the Pacific Oyster with this compressed cucumber and apple mignonette with a Cetra caviar was fantastic with a Krug. I mean, a no brainer there. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I mean, a really unique presentation and really delicious and expertly prepared. All right, well, the first course, you know, I'm always a little leery when people pair fish with red wine. And I have to say, the guys at uh, Zuma really went off the edge with their pairing here. King crab with ponzu lime butter and toro uh, and, uh, and and the Numantia uh, termes. And, uh, you know, these guys did this this dish with uh, toro, torch toro with a chili emulsion, golden beets, and crispy yuca mojo, which, um, you know, neither of this dish wasn't great with the, uh, uh, the the termantia, but it was good. I would have to say it worked. Maybe some of the components they could have changed to make it really sing, but man, I cannot criticize them too much. It's a daring pairing. Uh, well, tuna not quite as daring as whitefish like they did with the next course here at Zuma, but the king crab dish, wow, I was really surprised how this ponzu lime butter, uh, the butter, the richness of butter and the fat and butter really helped it to pair with termes, which, you know, Tinto de Toro has got an incredible amount of tannin to it. You know, part of what Manuel's biggest learning curve was, he said, was learning how to deal with the tannins. He said he took a buddy out to taste with him one day when they were going to pick the grapes, and he says, you got about two days usually in Toro when you want to get those grapes and when they are perfectly ripe, and he says they go out every day and taste through you know, all their vineyards every day just to see how the ripeness is going. And he said, asked one of his friends if he would come and taste with them one day. And he called him up the next morning to see if he was ready to come out and taste with them again. And he said, no, Manuel, I cannot taste anymore. My tongue, my palate is completely shot from all these tannins in this Toro wine. And this is a very unique place because, uh, well, Numantia, the name, uh, is well, was named after the uh, the village that uh, you know this uh, that's very well known for this Roman resistance. A thousand years ago, the Romans came to took them over, and they uh, for eighty days resisted them, and they were had them surrounded, and rather than give up, they burned themselves alive in the village. I said, what a horrible story to start out a wine dinner with. But anyway, it's kind of an interesting story about these people and this resistance in the northern part of Spain. And, you know, the vines also are known for this resistance. This is an area where they've never had phylloxera, or very sandy soils. Phylloxera does not like sand. So you have wines on their own rootstock uh, and 
very old vines, something that vines on their own rootstock live to be a really long time and still produce a fair amount of fruit. The, the, the vines for termes, 30 to 50 years old. Numanthia, 50 to 80 years old. Termanthia, 120 years old. Wow, incredibly old vines. The, the uh, termes have a lovely, vibrant fruitiness to it. Uh, it stands out for this lively character, uh, always really uh, fresh and a really bright red cherry in color, lovely purple notes, the aroma... Uh, gives off a little bit of uh, cherry and um, you know dark raspberry and uh, really lovely uh, spice in this wine as well. You get a little animal and soy notes coming out in this wine and uh, lovely freshness to this wine. Even though it is big, the term is, is meant to be drank somewhat on release. This 2009, a warm vintage, and uh, even though this wine was pretty drinkable, I would say you could hold on to this for a decade into your cellar. It had lovely balance and nice concentration. All right, next up at... Uh, the St. Regis, they did a duck confit with mushroom ragu, which was perfect with the Numanthia, I think, you know, red meat, something that has richness or saltiness to it is going to work with these tannins, the uh, black cod at uh, Zuma. Well, you know, I mean, black cod is not something I would put with a wine with massive tannins, even though they had this sauce that went with it. You know, everything was served family style at Zuma, which is how they do things. But for a winemaker dinner, you usually want to put things on individual plates. I mean, especially if you have pairings and things, and they had these additional items that they brought up with each course, and like I said, the food was fantastic, but maybe the pairings, well, this one, for me, just didn't work, the black cod and the Numanthia. It didn't really do anything for the Numanthia, which this wine is a little monster, 50 to 100-year-old vines, very, very low yields. You're talking, you know, uh, almost one uh, vine producing one bottle of wine. So uh, really lovely intensity. That's what you get out of that. And uh, this wine does see a little cold soak. That's one of the things they do to uh, deter the small tannins. They want to extract the big tannins because the big tannins are actually softer. The small tannins are more aggressive on your palate. And uh, this wine has got uh, really lovely dark earth, soy, espresso, dark berry, plum, a really meaty note, and kind of a wild animal note to this, some black licorice. Uh, this 2008 vintage, really nice vintage from Toro, a little bit more classic than 2009, very rich next to 2004, 2005, uh, one of Manuel's favorite vintages here, really well endowed on the palate as well, very round, and uh, like I said, the tannins in here, even though it's got a lot of tannins, very ripe and uh, somewhat silky on your palate at the end, a lot of dark spices coming out with this wine, that wild animal notes still showing but lots of everything and layers coming out in the finish of really long finish this 2008 needs a little time to open up in the bottle most excellent juice and thanks to andre and ken for bringing the 2005 numanthia to our tasting at uh, uh, zuma this wine was really nice next to the 2008 and a great example of why you want to sell a wine like numanthia because the tannins much more subdued than this wine. This was several people's wine of the night. Unfortunately, we don't have it in the store, the 2005. We do have 2008 available in 2009, coming in soon, but 2005, you probably have to check your wine searcher for those wines, and uh, probably out there in a really exceptional bottle. They only make 7,000 cases of this wine, so, I mean, I think total production at the whole winery is like under 10,000 cases, so relatively small when you look at uh, you know the overall size of this group LVMH. A rumor was when they bought it that they were going to expand the production and you know a few people mentioned that god Termes is everywhere how much do they make well it's only everywhere in Miami. Miami is one of the most important markets in the country for these Spanish wines so they do spend a lot of time promoting them here in this market if you see them out in a lot of restaurants it doesn't mean that they've doubled the production on Termanthia or Termes. It just means they did a hell of a good job getting it out there in this market. All right, well, the last wine, this is a short tasting. We they only have three wines. It's, uh, uh, Numanthia is the Termanthia, which Termanthia is a little monster. This wine is from 100-plus-year-old pre phylloxera wines, and the bouquet on this wine just jumps out of the glass. Dark spices, really complex toffee, mocha, an array of toasty oak spice, and dark berry fruit. This wine needs a couple days probably to open up fully but uh, we didn't have that kind of time, unfortunately. And uh, really dark color, really dense, really rich. And this is a wine in 2004, scored 100 points. And all the other wines from Spain that have scored 100 points in the Wine Advocate have gone up exponentially in price. This wine you can still find, well, for around $200 a bottle, which is not cheap, but they only make a few hundred cases of this wine. It's a very limited production. The 2008, uh, in a tasting of some top-level Spanish wines in Spain, came out number one. So in addition to Robert Parker's accolades, this Termanthia has gotten some very high marks from a lot of other critics. And uh, I mean, it's 
incredible how big this wine is, but on the finish, still lovely freshness and incredible length. This is a wine that you could keep for 20, 30 or more years in your cellar. Absolutely killer, uh, this 2009 Termanthia. All right, well, we did have a little dessert wine and, um, you know, we've got to save a little bit of room for sweet stuff. I don't eat it, so I'd rather drink it. And, uh, well, the Cloudy Bay Late Harvest Riesling was dessert wine of choice. It's another LVMH product. And, you know, you put your nose into a glass of Late Harvest Riesling, and I mean, it just brings me back to Germany. No matter where it's from, Riesling has that little petrol quality after it gets to be a couple years old. But also a lot of uh, that nice lemon, lime, citrus fruit, white peach, and um, really nice uh, uh, complexity in this wine. And, you know, all great sweet wines should finish dry. No matter how much sugar they have in them, they should still have enough acidity to carry through and kill the dryness, at the, kill the sweetness at the end with that acidity and make your tongue a yearn for another glass, which this late harvest reason Cloudy Bay does. An excellent example of what you can do with this varietal late harvest. And so that's what I had to drink with Manuel Luzada, the winemaker for Numantia. At uh, the Ritz Carlton at Via Luna, and then at Zuma down in the Epic Hotel in Miami. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.